Hi. Today we are going to explore how to handle objections and concerns from partners, investors, and other key stakeholders. If you start your own business, you will soon realize that you are not really your own boss. In fact, you have many bosses ranging from your partners, investors, customers, and other key stakeholders. One of the key issues you face when communicating with these stakeholders is that they may not share the same views as you do. Sometimes they will voice their concerns, and you will need to find ways to gain their trust and buy in to move forward. This is not a case of proving who is wrong or right. Rather, it is about finding acceptable solutions to all parties and make sure the company moves forward and gets stronger as one. Do know that as an entrepreneur, a lot is at stake when you handle disagreements with partners, investors, and other key stakeholders. Do know that your priority is not to prove that you are right or fall in love with each other or pretend all is fine. What you want to do is to find a path that is mutually acceptable, so that you can move forward and get on with your business. Fortunately, here are two ways that you can resolve potentially explosive confrontations and reach mutually acceptable agreements. The first one is about resolving the objections. Now, objections handling is one of those key skills that salespeople must have if they were to get any sale. And the key purpose of handling objections is not about proving that you are right and the customer is wrong. The mantra in resolving objections is that customers can always say, "I cannot outtalk you, but I'll just not buy from you." Hence, the number one rule in handling objections is always, always avoid arguments with the other party. At best, arguments result in impasse, which in turn wastes everybody, everyone, everyone else's time. At worst. It leads to total breakdown in relationships and resulting in a lose-lose outcome. So here are the key steps to handling objections. The first one is to affirm. Let the other person know that you are listening and can see things from their point of view. The second part is on clarifying. Instead of rushing in to explain things which may be perceived as being defensive, ask questions to gain clarity about exactly what they meant. And then suggest. Make your suggestions in the form of questions so that you explore options and co-create the solution with the other party. Finally, check. Check if the other party can accept the path forward and move on. A simplified example can be as follows. An objection from from an investor could be, "I don't see our venture growing fast enough. You need to provide better numbers." Instead of going into an explanation that could well end up as an argument, you can try the following. I understand your concerns. When you say we are not growing fast enough, what could be your expectations besides capturing more market share? What else would be more important to you? If the investor is going to give some indication of what he or she expects, and that you deem as somewhat achievable, here's what you can suggest. Given that these are your other expectations besides market share growth, can we also look at these other aspects? Could we adjust market share growth a little bit so that we could also achieve those other objectives as well? The second part on handling these、um, objections is to resolve the deeper conflicts. Now, of course, life will be a lot easier if all objections and disagreements can be resolved using those simple four steps mentioned above. Sometimes the disagreements could be very complex and run in a much deeper level. Hence, you may want to try the following seven steps to resolve those deeper issues. The first step: establish a common goal or objective. If both parties are heading towards the same objectives, then there will be hope to resolve the differences in opinion on how to get there. Step number two: present the facts. Let each party present the facts as each side perceives it, without any prejudice. The key thing here is about your ability to see things from the other person's point of view, and vice versa. Number three, 
look for the positives. Instead of telling the other party that he or she is wrong, start by pointing out what are some of the valid points they had shared. Being able to agree just on some of those points can go a long way in resolving your conflicts. Number four, address mutual concerns. It would not be a disagreement、um, if there are no causes of concerns. So this is the part to share with which aspects each party disagree about. The key thing here again is to listen. And see things from the other person's point of view before making judgments. Number five, co-create new solutions. When we raise concerns or differences to each other, it's not to shut down the other person. Instead, what we'd like to do is to help each other co-create solutions that are mutually acceptable. After all, it's a matter of different opinions or ways of working to reach common goals. The sixth step. Empathize with each other. If there are any solutions proposed at this juncture, be sure to check with your gut how you feel about it, and allow the the other party to check with his or her gut too. In fact, check for signs in the other party if he or she is feeling positive or negative about the solution. If the gut feel is negative, it will not be done. You may need to ask a question such as, "Is there anything bothering you about this solution that we just worked on or read on?" And, and this is to see if there are other issues that you need to resolve with the other person. Number seven, mapping the next steps. Resolving complex agreements like these is just the first step of really getting things done together. The next step will be how both parties map out ways to to move forward. And have milestones to check if everything is on track. Listen actively. So does it mean that making use of these two steps and you will resolve all disagreements and conflicts with your partners, investors, and key stakeholders? Of course not. There will be some situations where the disagreements could not be resolved, at least not in the short term. There would also be two key things. You need to do to improve your success in resolving such issues. The first one is to listen actively for the other person's perspectives, concerns, and/or other issues. The more you understand the other person, the more you will understand issues and the likelihood of you resolving it. And of course, you need to practice. These concepts are simple to understand, but can take a lifetime to perfect. The more you practice the above concepts, the better you will be to co-create mutually agreeable solutions. My name is CJ, and I'm I'm an, an agile and sales coach. Please leave your comments and feedback by emailing info at directions-consulting.com. I look forward to hearing from you. See you soon. I'll look forward to hearing from you, really, really soon.